Welcome to Passport for Wellness. Today's excursion will start in one minute. Enjoy the sights and sounds of today's Passport for Wellness destination. Welcome to Passport for Wellness. Today's excursion starts now. Well, hello there. Looks like you're ready to do some traveling today. I'm your conductor, Hank, and I am just thrilled that you'll be traveling with us today. Before we get started, make sure you have enough space around you so you can move freely without bumping into another traveler. That also means having your own chair to sit in when needed, as well as the person's chair in front of you to use for balance when standing. Make sure you have enough space to walk in place and to stretch your arms out wide and move from side to side. If you plan on sitting throughout our excursion, make sure you have enough space to move your legs and to stretch out your arms and can move from side to side. Just follow along with what you see on the screen at a comfortable pace. If you're sitting, make sure you follow along with what you see in this special box. Be sure to slow down or stop at any point if you feel lightheaded or dizzy. Only participate if you feel confident and comfortable moving your body throughout our travels. So, where are we headed today? Oh, traveling back into the past, are we? Exploring the Roman era with its mighty monuments and magnificent cities. Maybe checking out the Renaissance while we're at it. Birthplace of enlightenment and curiosity. Must be exciting heading to ancient Italy. I can remember investigating some of those places myself many years ago. Of course, I was much younger back then. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Henry, and I'm so excited to be here with you. We're here along the Appian Way in ancient Italy. It's the earliest Roman road and one of the most strategically important. Come on, everyone. Let's act like we're marching, Roman soldier style. Rome's famous roads were often built by soldiers so they can move quickly around the Roman Empire as well as provide reliable routes of transportation for officials and trade. The roads were built so well that some are still in use today. When people say all roads lead to Rome, back in the day, they really did. The Romans were excellent engineers at moving water as well as people. Here, twist from side to side, like a bucket brigade. That was the old way of moving water. But the Romans, well, they devised an aqueduct to channel water from fresh sources in the mountains and let gravity flow it down into the cities. Rome had over 250 miles of aqueducts 
bringing its thirsty population water. One fountain discharged nearly 20 million gallons a day. Woo! Nice coordination, everyone. Hey, looks like we made it to the Aurelian Walls of Rome. These mighty walls were made to keep out invaders who would try to scale the walls with ladders. Like this, climb with me. The city of Rome was sacked several times during the Roman Empire's reign of nearly 500 years. Keep climbing. When the Germanic tribes like the Visigoths and Vandals were successful, they took everything and left the city on fire. That's where the word Vandal comes from. Okay, enough climbing. Walk with me. Luckily, we're visiting ancient Italy on a happier day when the empire was strong and the emperor ruled supreme. How many Roman emperors can you name? Maybe just try some of the famous ones. One of Rome's most famous fountains wasn't built by the Romans, but their story inspired its creation. The famous Trevi Fountain. At the center of the fountain is Neptune, god of the seas, in a chariot being pulled by two very different horses. One calm, squat down with me, and one wild, back up with your arms out. These horses depict the two states of the ocean. Again, calm and wild. Calm, gentle seas, and wild towering waves. One more time, calm ocean waters and wild stormy seas. Rome also has many statues, like this one. Strike the pose. The Romans excelled at portraiture, which is where the face and expression are the dominant focus. Okay, now let's reverse it. Any elite Roman house had bust of its ancestors, cultural heroes, and Roman gods for the public to view. Well done. Something else the public viewed were chariot races. Here at Circus Maximus. So squat down. Hold on to your chair if you need to, and get ready to race. Go! Circus Maximus was the first and largest stadium in Rome. Chariots raced down the course, Ben-Hur style. Okay, here comes the turn, hold on. And then sprinted toward the finish line. You're doing great. Tuck down to make it across the finish line. Woo, good job. That was exciting. Let's walk it off. You know, it's always fun to be in a race. What's the most exciting race that you have ever participated in? Think about it now. What were you racing for? What kind of race was it? Sometimes it can be just as exciting watching a race as actually being in it. You know, legend has it that Rome was founded by a pair of twin boys, Romulus and Remus, who were raised by a she-wolf. They would later establish a city, but Romulus killed Remus and thus started Rome's long history of violence and bloodshed. While that may be a myth, Rome was built along the Tiber River and in the middle of several hills. Okay, quick quiz time. How many hills was Rome built around? Was it three, five, or seven? The famous saying is the Seven Hills of Rome. Rome was built around seven hills. Wow, now we are at the famous Colosseum, known for lots of celebrations. And no Roman celebration was complete without wine. They weren't the first to make it, but the Romans certainly helped perfect the process. Romans believed that wine was a daily necessity. Everyone drank it. So let's help make some more. First, we have to reach out and pick bunches of grapes. That's it, pull those grapes off the vine. Now comes the fun part, stomping the grapes. Take your feet and stomp down hard to crush the grapes. You could stomp down with your toes to make a nice Pinot Grigio, or you could stomp down with your heel to make a hearty Super Tuscan. Good job. The Colosseum was also one of the engineering marvels of the Roman Empire. It even had a retractable roof. 
Hey, let's pull on ropes to work the roof. There you go. They would extend awnings strung across the Coliseum to provide shade over the audience in the stands. Keep pulling before the start of the main event. The Coliseum was the largest amphitheater ever built. While we are all familiar with the stories of the gladiators and other entertainment that happened inside the Coliseum, did you know they reenacted naval battles there? Sit down and row with me like we're on board a Roman galley. Engineers would fill the Colosseum floor with water and large ships would do battle inside the amphitheater. This is how they would share stories of great victories at sea with the population. Talk about a flotilla. Okay, back on our feet. What a spectacle the Colosseum must have been back then. What's a spectacular event you remember seeing? Was it a show, a concert, maybe a sporting event? Wow, you are doing great on our journey to ancient Italy. We've already been on the Appian Way, seen the Trevi Fountain and Circus Maximus. So it's probably a good time to minimize our activity and save some energy for the second half of our journey today. So grab a drink of water if you need to, or plan to have one after we finished. Either way, we'll be back to continue our journey together soon. Oh, and see if you know the answer to these fun facts about ancient Rome. We are exploring ancient Italy. We've already been to the glory days of the Roman Empire. Now it's time to jump about a thousand years into the Renaissance. We are here in Venice, the most prosperous city in all of Europe during the Renaissance. Also famous for its gondolas. Hey, let's act like we're paddling a gondola. So why was Venice so wealthy? Because of being on the Adriatic Sea, keep paddling, Venice had over 3,000 ships trading with the rest of the Mediterranean and was the crossroads for European, Byzantine, and Islamic commerce. Woo! Good arm workout. Here in the Piazza San Marco or St. Mark's Square, the leaders of Venice threw their money around like feeding pigeons. Hey, let's keep working those arms and feed the pigeons. There you go. The leaders competed with each other to build the greatest palace and support the most talented artists with their newfound riches. This made Venice a very, very wealthy city. You know what else Italy is famous for? Pizza! And let's make one. First, start by tossing the dough up in the air. That's it. Now, spin it above your head with both arms. Okay, now lay it out in front of you. Let's add a few toppings. Now extend your arms out as you roll it up. Oh boy, I love pizza. Woo, let's shake those arms out. Hey, what was your favorite recipe? Walk with me. Maybe it wasn't to make it, just to eat it. Was it something you created or was it passed down to you? 
I find that a memorable meal often makes for a lifelong memory. Speaking of a memorable meal, we are now in the heart of Tuscany, birthplace of the Renaissance. Let's start moving. Tuscany is famous for its olive oil, which is pressed from olives. So let's act like an olive press and push our hands together, just like that. The story of Tuscany is truly the tale of two cities, Florence and Siena, the more conservative Sienese and the flamboyant Florentines were rivals about everything, even who made the best olive oil. Woo, that made for some good hand stretching. Good job, you're doing great. Now, most people have heard of the Tuscan city of Pisa. Let's sit down and extend your legs so you feel the stress in your core. That is what the Leaning Tower of Pisa feels like as it shifts on ground too soft to bear its weight. Built at the start of the Renaissance, the Leaning Tower of Pisa at four degrees off center is one of the most famous architectural mistakes in the world. Whew. Hey, one of the best ways to experience the Renaissance is to bike through Tuscany. So let's stay seated and start pedaling. Some of the scenery hasn't changed since the days of Da Vinci. Tuscany is known for its landscapes. In fact, the Val d'Orcia, gentle rolling hills, is such a familiar setting in many Renaissance paintings that it has been designated a World Heritage Site. Man, that was fun. Let's stand back up. Let's walk. Sometimes scenery like this just takes me to a whole other place. What places do you think about when you see beautiful scenery? Is it somewhere from your childhood? Maybe a favorite place you'd like to visit, hmm? I find the memories often make those places even more special over time. Okay, let's pick up the pace a little. The cities of Florence and Siena once settled a dispute by agreeing to send riders toward each other at the first crow of the rooster. Siena fed their white rooster well, but Florence cut back on their black rooster's rations. Come the day of the race, let's go a little faster. The Florentine rider got a head start when their hungry rooster crowed at the first glint of sunlight, while the Siena rooster, fat and spoiled, slept in. Woo! Good race! At last, here we are in Florence, birthplace of the Renaissance. Come on, let's take a look around this beautiful city. Florence is the capital of Tuscany and home to some of the world's great museums and art collections. It was here that the great artisans of the Renaissance were free to unleash their creative talents. But to truly appreciate the city's beauty, we have to get up high to see it. That means climbing up to San Miniato. Lift those knees and let's get up those steps. The city of Florence spans the Arno River. That means bridges and one famous one in particular, the Ponte Vecchio looking much as it did during the Renaissance, just with tourist and jewelry shops on it now, instead of the butchers it had back in the day. Okay, let's get up on our tiptoes and take a look at this magnificent view of Florence and its sprawling Renaissance beauty. You can see the Duomo, the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Flower, the Uffizi Museum, the Palazzo Vecchio Clock Tower, and the Pitti Palace, home of the famous Medici family. The Medicis were the power patrons of Florence. Here, let's do some power moves. Originally a banking family, they later became a political dynasty in Tuscany. The Medici Bank was the largest bank in Europe during the Renaissance, and the family actually produced four popes during the 15 and 1600s. But perhaps the greatest impact was their support of Leonardo da Vinci. So many of da Vinci's creations are still with us today, like this famous drawing of the Vitruvian Man, or these sketches of early flying machines, or even the first tank. And he even designed and tested concepts for a parachute. 
Da Vinci was truly a man before his time, and the Medici family in Florence were the ones funding Da Vinci's work. You know, walking around ancient Italy made me kind of hungry. Good thing Tuscany is known for its fresh, healthy foods, like quality olive oils, fresh mozzarella cheese, Roma tomatoes, and fresh herbs, like basil. Healthy foods like those give us the energy to travel together. It's been great fun traveling around ancient Italy with you. Thank you so much for coming along. Maybe we could do it again sometime. Maybe sometime soon. I certainly hope so. Until then, Arrivederci, everyone. I can remember that trip like it was yesterday. Or maybe it was even today. When I'm traveling, I like to stretch the muscles that I've used once our journey is done. If you're standing, have a seat. Let's first lace our fingers together and push your arms out forward in front of you. Oh, boy, that feels good. Next, let's lift our left knee up and pull it towards you. Excellent. Now let's do the same with our right knee. Uh, there you go. Oh. Okay, time now for a few deep breaths. Breathe in. As far as you can raise your arms up above your head. Oh. And breathe out as you move your arms to your side. Good job. Breathe in. Breathe out. I can just imagine what it must have been like visiting ancient Italy, where all roads lead to Rome. Breathe in. Breathe out. Racing chariots in the Circus Maximus. Hoisting the shades in the Colosseum. Breathe in. Breathe out. Paddling a gondola in Venice. Leaning like the Tower of Pisa. And then hiking through the Renaissance in Florence, Italy. Magnifico. Taking a fanciful journey like that today reminds me of all kinds of things. What did you remember from today's journey? It's always good to remember things like that. Until next time, make it a memorable day.